Hey everyone, it's Paul Grossman, the Dark Arts Wizard, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the tools that you can have in your automation tool belts. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Apple Tool Eyes, which is a pretty neat tool that allows us to take a look at what our application looks like when in our previous build compared to our current build, and it does it at the graphical level, and it has a lot of interesting effects and, uh, and useful tools in it. And it actually does something that I was completely thought was absolutely impossible, which was to automate uh, doing comparisons of graphical comparisons. And I've kind of completely changed my mind on that on that uh, on that front. So I'm going to kind of show you what this does here. There's uh, my uh, my page out there. And what we're going to do is do a comparison of Google. Now that is usually what everybody does Google but I'm not going to use Google from today I'm actually going to go back to the Internet Archive and we're going to go to Google from 2000 and uh, 2001 and see what it actually looked like and to be honest it hasn't changed all that much let me just show you what UFT looks like over here this is UFT 14 and what we're going to be doing, first of all, is figuring out what size we need to have our browser at. Uh, we would want to keep our browser at the exact same uh, size when we're doing graphical uh, applications out there. And how do you know with it? Well, I'm going to be setting this at 900 pixels by 600 pixels. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. But how do you know what size your image is at? Well, you can take a look and see by going over to viewport size. Viewport size will tell you exactly what you're set up at as and then you can adjust it to whatever size and make sure that your application is displaying correctly at that size. And we're going to go over to about 900 by 600 but I'm going to leave it like this at the moment because we're automatically going to change that setting. All right, so I'm going to just do an F10 over here, F11, and we're going to give a little run and go step by step and kind of show you what this does. First thing is I need an API key, and I'm getting a free key for a brief amount of time just to do a little demo and show you guys how this works. I set up a browser object, and what I'm going to do is set the baseline info from the browser you can see the objects using there and it's saying we're going to run it at 600, uh, 900 by 600. It doesn't do anything for, at all at, at first. It will do this in a moment. And the next thing is we want to go to our eyes application. Our eyes are actually being uh, added in very easily from our resources. There's our eyes QFL and wherever we have uh, to locate it. And then that allows us to connect with the uh, with the, the comparison on, on the cloud for our comparison of our application. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to execute opening the eyes and then we're setting up what our matches are going to be. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. The next thing is we're going to navigate over to what Google looked like back in uh, 2011 and that is it right there, September uh, 1st, 2011. And we're going to go synchronize on this. And the next we're going to do a, our uh, check object using uh, eyes. Now it's now configured our system to the correct size out there to do its comparison. And then we're going to click close on that and then report out uh, what happened. Now we've uh, basically identified a new test and that's basically it. Now how do you find out where that went? Well, that's easy enough. You go and take a look at your last results. There's our last results. And over here it says, here is my new results. So over here, this is my path that I'm going to use to get to my results. I'm going to go and open up Chrome over here. And Chrome will have that list out there. And in just a moment, we should be able to see those results. There we are. So here's our run. This is the application's UFT demo. And there's only one uh, image out there. And we're going to say that this is our um, image that we want to use for our validation. So it says, okay, this is our baseline. Nothing really too exciting over here going on right now. Now I'm going to switch back over to UFT. I'm going to make a small quick change. Let's go jump ahead in time a little bit. And we're going to say, no, we're not looking at September of 2011. Now we're looking at 
2017, a more recent, much more recent version. And we're going to say this is going to be our validation by March 15th of 2017. And I'm going to give this another run. So let's see how that looks. We'll let it just kick off right away, right through it. He gives us uh, the, uh, the March 15th, 2017 look. And then we start doing the comparison. And in a moment, we're going to get back over to see what, uh, what differences we see between the two different dates out there. Now we just completed that validation. I'm going to go back over and take a look at what Apple Tool Eyes is like over here. I'm going to go back a moment and hit uh, refresh, reload the page. And I'm going to go back one and see what we got. Uh, oh, we do have a, um, there's our comparison, and that was our original one. And we're going to take a look and see what our differences are between what we had and what we have there today. So there's our September 1st. And let's take a look at uh, a refresh over here. Here's our new version over here. This is what we're going to do. There's one. There's there's one mismatch. I want you to kind of take a look at what this actually shows us. Uh, shows us. Uh, what we're seeing here is that a lot of different items changed in it. Everything that uh, the changes highlighted in this pink uh, view there, and we can actually take a look, even do a, a little uh, playback of what our application is. But there's only one screen capture there, so. There's not going to be much there. We can change uh, what, how well we look at uh, this image, whether we want to be exact every item, or we can just go into strict, or we can take a look at our, just the content that has changed. And some of our content has changed. I'm going to bring this back down here. Thank you. Uh, we can also see exactly where are all the different points that we identified uh, differences there. And then we can also take a look at the differences between the, the dates, between the two different versions. You can see Google changed their logo a bit over there over time. They also changed where everything was kind of uh, uh, located. Some of our some of our texts has changed from uh, uh, bit to bit. And we're also identifying that the, the month over here has changed. And so has some of the other items in the descriptions on the page. So it really identifies very easily what you what you've got when you do this. Now that's kind of my sample exa example out here. There are a couple other things with some examples that they had where they're kind of showing what you can see uh, in differences between what uh, is being identified, like differences in GitHub. You can see this. Uh, and there are quite a few other features that make this really, really cool. Uh, I did mention that the the applications can do, we can do different levels of validations. In this case, I did a complete different validations. I just compared Facebook to 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 uh, to, to Google, and uh, of course, everything absolutely changed on that. So we can take a look and see the difference over here. We're actually looking at the exact same image over there. Uh, let's try a different one for an example. Um, there we go. There's my Facebook uh, setup. So this is, I just did Facebook versus Google. Here's a Google search of stuff. And then I just compared it to what Facebook would look like and identified exactly what was some of the... Uh, major changes in the content versus what we uh, what we had out there um, the the nice thing about this is it really gives you a good example of identifying what images are out there if you get a whole bunch of images you can group uh, all the steps that are that are, have similar differences let's say you get like 99 uh, items that are listed, but only 98 of them are the exact same ones. So you can actually group them together in uh, uh, out that like that. I'm going to give you the a uh, little article here on how um, uh, that is done. We'll uh, take a look at some of the other examples of, of Apple Tools, but today right now we're kind of running out of time. So I'm going to basically show how a baseline is created. Uh, you can take a look at more information on that. I do hope you do take a, a, an opportunity to take a look at Apple Tool Eyes. You can see that it can embed very easily into a framework. You can basically just have their code added in 
to see where you're going to uh, do your comparisons from version to version and report it out. So if you like this demo, uh, what you saw out there, uh, take a look at Apple Tools Eyes. And uh, if you liked uh, the stuff you saw, the, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm the Dark Arts Wizard. And you can take a look at, you can message me at the Dark Arts Wizard. Or you can do, use the hashtag Dark Arts Wizard and see some of the interesting things that I, I think and talk about. Thank you very much for watching this video. And have yourself a great day.